the Zacharia pinball offering is probably it, it may not have the strength of table design that some of the other offerings have but what it does show you is evolution it mm. really does show how and this is in some part what magic pixels own um thoughts of evolution mean but at the same time when you're going from from the the solar states which are essentially the bedrock like all the all the game designs in magic pixel have been based off the solid states the the retro tables or the ems are riffing off the designs in um or the branding at least the the art package of those um solid state tables and going back in time but then you go forward in time with the dmds and then you go even more forward in time with the deluxes which are like essentially <laughs> video screens so essentially they're using they're really it's a really creative thing about that package right like they are really we said this before that by far they are getting the most value out of their license for sure um but it it shows you the i guess the the the, the pinball design chops that this studio has it's that's a lot of skill to be able to go we know what EMs look like. And the thing is, some of those EM tables are crazy in design. And that's exactly what some of the early EMs were. They were just unplayable <laughs> because they were just so oddball when they were trying to work out geometry and stuff in games of what worked and what didn't. Like they were essentially experimenting in the wild with all these players um, in the early days of EM, like in wood rail days. And some of the, some of the um, EM designs in... Uh, Zachariah Pinball are very much inspired on wood rail designs. They're oddball to say the least. Um, but so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clarify here too for those that don't know. In Magic Pixel Zachariah Pinball, there are there's an EM tab. Those are the tables that actually do physically exist in the real world. And then there's the retro tab. The retro tab is Magic Pixel's interpretation of what tables would look right. like as an EM. Yeah, that's true. Um, which makes it which makes it hard to commentate on because there's a blurred line right. for me sometimes. Like the, the retros are really let's see how completely ridiculous we can make a table and still have a ball travel around on it. Um, <laughs> because those ones are there's some really strange ones. Like there there are some tables with just literally the whole bottom half of the playfield is filled with gobble holes that will eat your ball and return it to the outlane instantly and the whole top of the play field is just loaded with pop bumpers yeah and it's just it is like wood rail craziness really um in this in its design but it takes it to an, the next level they really are some weird designs but still interesting to check out whether i want to buy them as a dlc i don't know mm, maybe not because they're just a little bit too out out there they're not really super enjoyable to play i'll, I'll say that well this brings up a something I've been kind of... People have asked, hey, can you comment about the Zachariah uh, Deluxe tables? And other than playing the free trial version of it, I haven't purchased any of them. No, I mean, and I've been asking myself, why haven't I? Because I... Each one is vanilla. What's that? I, I feel that each one, particularly the animations on the DMD, there's just... It's cookie cutter. Well, and that's what I was going to say. It, it follows suit with uh, actually what they did with the remakes. Mm. And that is, for the remakes, it was just, well, instead of having a score display, we're going to put that score in a DMD. But we're not going to put any character animation or any kind of animation uh, with scenery or there's not going to be a video mode, nothing. There's going to be nothing on the DMD other than a score and you know maybe firework graphics and yeah. text telling you what to shoot for. That's about the yeah. that's about the extent of what's going to happen, and so the deluxe tables it takes that exact same methodology with hey we've got a video screen just like you would see on the latest Stern tables, but they don't do anything with it. It's just literally a score display. And as I was playing through all of the remake tables, of which hey at least there's this Jared, our voices are going to be. On a cabinet now. On a cabinet, that's right. Um, Look at that. 
We're but, famous on the cabinet. But what <laughs> I noticed with all of the callouts, we all had essentially the same script. Yeah. Which was we really did calling out spinner, double jackpot, loops. Uh, loops. That was it. We we weren't calling out. Look, you take that and you look at medieval madness, and it is all character. And you know they're not they're not sitting there calling out loops necessarily or anything. It's there's it's building a story through all the call out voices. And, yeah, and that's what's missing, isn't it? Like, it's completely table, what's missing. The the tables themselves they become interchangeable. They do, and the thing that's frustrating, and I, I get why, right? Hiring voice talent and developing narrative for. A, I was going to say it's, the, it's not the hiring of voice talents; it's the developing a narrative, a story. It's working at the foot of a table, it's it's hard to yeah. do. So, like these these newer tables that Zachary are offering, they they have different shots to take and they have a different feel to them, but they're very very anemic in the the theme and the integration and i think that's what makes me not click the purchase button that much on them that's yeah because it's not it's not that the design the layout is bad it's just not memorable essentially it almost feels like mm. you're playing a whitewood after whitewood after whitewood yeah and really you don't nothing like sticks alpha, with you with alpha 0.2 code on the play field that just allows you to flick and have your score registered yeah and like and that's that's the frustrating bit um it's it would be good if they could somehow weave some story into these remake tables because they're calling out for it they really need something to bring you in and look if they did that it might be a different story but at this stage they're just they're very samey to play and interestingly enough that's kind of the problem with the real zacharia tables I mean, they're all. It's it. Yeah, there's art, but yeah, that's it. There's not callouts. The there's not. Uh, well, look, it's very much the same. Like the the original wave of solid state tables that Zachary released, they were in the era of you know the system, uh, the very early like eighties pinball tables. Like yeah, they were going from eighty to eighty seven, I think, for the solid states, and they stopped producing them. It was early on. Where they went, nah, we, we can't do any more of these tables. Like they weren't going to the nineties in the age of DMD and stuff no. like that. It was all alpha. It was just not even alpha numeric, it was just alpha tables. So like you know, having played those tables, they don't do speech. They don't really do anything like that. Oh sorry. They do do speech, but it's like one or two phrases. But think about That's this. It. Centaur, which was nineteen eighty one, has oodles more theming oh, and character and stuff that than anything the Zacharia ever put out. It almost tells a story with only about five or six call outs. Right. Which is when you think about it, pretty ingenious. And the same as Gorgar. I was just thinking Gorgar. Gorgar is six call outs, yet it actually has a narrative to it. Yeah. So like it's possible and you're you did right, Chris. You can do it. But Zacharia chose not to. They just chose to let the artwork and the playfield layouts tell the story and not tell that story through any sort of um, computerization. 